like let's say the death card, which is probably would be the most famous card in the tarot deck. And most, the full card, death card, and the full card. Yeah, I think there are you probably go. The two most popular. There cards. you go. <laughs> the the death card just represents the need to surrender and to let go. And if you can surrender and let go, you will be reborn. And so the problem in the death card of the challenge is in, is in the letting go. If you can let go and surrender to, to whatever is beyond your control, then you get reborn into a new reality. And that's the basic lesson of, of that card. Basic lesson of life, I think. <laughs> Well, and I think that there you go, and that's a good example of the archetypal quality of the Tarot. It is right. a big part of life is learning how to let go. So it's learning how to die. So the ultimate surrender. <laughs> so if you could show me, like you're talking about major arcana and, and minor arcana, what like what's the difference in the way they look or how they show up? I know you talked about like a deck of cards and okay. like what what is a major arcana? Do they have different qualities? Do they sure, represent different they qualities? Do. Is one more you, serious and one I'll, a little bit lighter? I'll and, give you a, a simple overview on okay, that. Thank you. There are forty minor arcana cards, ten cards in four suits. Just like in a regular deck of cards, you have hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades in a regular deck of cards. And you have cards 1 through 10, the ace being number 1. And in the tarot, you have pentacles, cups, swords, and wands, which represent the four elements, earth, water, air, and fire. And earth is physical, water is emotional. Swords is mental, and wands is um, spiritual. And so that's 40 cards right there. And the minor arcana are the supporting cast to the major arcana. I've been okay. brought up the major arcana a couple of times already. There's 22 major arcana cards, and they represent the 22 archetypal experiences of life, the growth process, the manifestation process that all of us humans are always involved in as we go through life. And then um, there are 16 court cards, which are the same as in a regular deck of cards where you have king, queen, jack, and in the tarot we also have page, or it could be prince or princess, or child, which in a regular deck of cards we don't have that. We have kings, queens, and, and jacks. jacks. Right. And the court cards are just our human archetypes, and the the sixteen human archetypes are all archetypes that should exist inside of each and every one of us. And when one of those cards are pulled, it represents the need to actualize the energy of that particular archetype. Okay. I might be getting ahead of myself a little bit, you know, and in going into all that. But so the. Tarot is broken down into the 22 major arcana cards, the 40 minor arcana cards, and then the 16 court cards. And the major arcana cards are the focus. Those are the karmic life lessons or the archetypal life lessons that we're all here to master. And then the 40 minor arcana cards are just a supporting cast, or they break down some of those major arcana ideas into smaller ideas, or into more sort of definite, littler constructs. And then, like I already said, the, the court cards are, are archetypes, are human archetypes that, that we should all have, be able to draw upon should from be, within yeah, us. That we should. We oh, I should be have. shitting. I should be <laughs> shitting. Should well, I? that's why we have. That's why we go and see people like you for tarot and astrology, and people like us for hypnotherapy, so we can have a little bit more of all those archetypes, all mm -hmm. twenty-two of those archetypes. So great. I, I really appreciate explaining that because I know I have had tarot readings, and I really have no idea what all those cards are about. So. Thanks for explaining that. You How know, about, I want to bring one thing up, Mitch. Okay. I, I, I have a um, plug to make about a friend of ours, okay. Kelly Howell. She has a wonderful website called Theater of the Mind, and both of really? us have podcasts on her website, Theater of the Mind, and I have one on the Tarot, and I explain the first ten major arcana cards of oh, the excellent. Tarot deck in great detail, and I was actually very pleased with how that podcast turned out, so if any of your viewing audience out there is interested in learning more about the Tarot, go to Theater of the Mind, and 
click on podcasts and go into the archives and you can also see a podcast by Mitch Friedman on hypnotherapy which is also a very excellent podcast but it's in the archives because we both did it a couple years ago and you could probably google it I bet if you just google theater of the mind you could probably get right to it I know that's where a lot of people have found it I haven't seen that in a long time I know I did my podcast like five years ago now it's been that long one I think was two yeah it's amazing isn't it so how about if um, I come up with some kind of fun little question and we just get what's a good amount of like one card should i pick one card two card three cards what's a good well amount to usually kind of i have people pull three cards if okay. they if they just have a good basic question okay basic question um when am i going to get my network show okay <laughs> no no is, is that a, like an okay question no no well let's do something well okay so that takes us to a, that takes us to a great place right and that's the idea of the tarot being a fortune-telling device or something that you can use to predict the future. Now, the tarot can show you a probable possibility that can occur for you. But once again, there is always the matter of choice involved right. in life. Well, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> And um, so, you know, people, of course, do come all the time with wanting to know something about the future. And what the cards will show on this question that you're asking is where you are energetically with this process of manifesting a network TV show. Okay, well, then let's, put, let's make it a little bit more general. Since Brandy and I are doing this together, let's talk about... Just we're both moving into a whole new arena with teaching and classes and corporations and um, as well as a network TV show that is one of our goals. Look out, Oprah. So, um, so, so, um, yeah. That's that's the question I want to ask. Is just in general, are we making decisions that are moving us towards that? Are we on the right track? Because we're feeling really good about it. And we're having a good time. And you know what I usually do when people come with questions is I sort of help tailor them the question okay. to to yeah, maybe know. make it a little more appropriate. I know the feeling. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm sure you do. And it's I would ask a question like. What do Brandy and I need to be paying attention to right now in order to continue on this path of manifestation of a network talk show? Okay, that sounds good to me. Sound good to you, Brandy? Okay, we're on. So what do I need to do? You tell me. Shuffle? Yeah, you shuffle a little, and we can't spread them out because we don't have a table. I hope you guys have me back sometime, and we'll do a full-on tarot reading. Okay, so, so tell me my question again. Tell, tell us our question again. Our question again is, is what do Brandy and I need to stay focused on and be aware of in order to manifest this network television show? Okay, and as a client now, I have a good question. Is that something that I would focus on and imagine and see the outcome? Like, what, what's my job in this as I'm pulling these cards? Well, that's a good question, to believe it. <laughs> okay. Are we ready, Brandy? Put all your attention into this. Here we go. Okay, there's my first card. Okay, we could see okay, that. We'll hold, we'll hold it up for you in just a second. I'm pulling three cards, is yeah. that right? Okay, there's my second card. Okay. we got the Three of Swords. And the, oh, that's a pretty card. The sun. All right, so let me put these down and I'll help you with the... Well, we've got the Knight of Pentacles here, the Three of Swords in the middle, and the sun on the right. And it's a very interesting three cards that you pulled because it's it there's a representation of the Knight of Pentacles. He's the achiever. And you... Both have certainly been that that energy, that male energy. Knights, you know, have a tremendous amount of trust, dignity, integrity in whatever it is they do, and and they do the work of the king, and it's all about achieving, making things happen, getting things done. We've been which, doing that. No, oh, you sure <laughs> have. And then you have the three of swords in the middle, and that's the heartbreak card, and it's so interesting how um, honest tarot cards can be. And, you know, I don't know if it's even appropriate for me to bring all this up, but I know you and Brandy just came through some real difficulties with some of your old colleagues, and there's the Three of Swords, you know, the, that you're a little disappointed and heartbroken around, you know, how, how um, some of your old friends chose to um, respond to your blossoming here. Well, I could tell that's true because I'm getting all teary-eyed just as you're saying that. So, And then 